Hello guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome, my name is Monica, and today I thought it'd be really fun to look back onto like one of my first, if not the first, favorites video I ever did on this channel. I was going through my subscriptions the other day and I saw Abby Williamson, Williams, Abby Williams, excuse me, oof, did a video basically just, I think it was like a year ago, responded to her favorites from a year ago, but I realized I hadn't actually gone back and rewatched like my really old videos and before I went down and just watched them for myself, I thought how fun would it be to just record this and actually talk about, you know, the products, am I still using the products, do I have any other different ones that I think work better, and then like on the, on another note, I'm younger in this video, I've got worse acne in this video, and my hair is straight. So I don't know, I, th I thought it'd be fun to watch with you guys and just talk it through and I don't know, if you guys like these kind of things, I can react to a few of my other older videos as well. So this video, let me pull it up, that would help, huh? So this video was called Favorites and Fails, January, February 2018. So this was my first fa ever favorites videos and this was back when I was, um, doing fa- oh, the doorbell rang. Do I want to know who that is? So this was back when I was still doing, or I was trying to do like favorites and fails, or I was trying to talk about like big products and, like that I loved and then products that I really didn't like. And I didn't, I kind of cut that out. Like only, I'll do videos like if I really don't like products, don't think they're worth your money, I'll talk about them. But I tend to keep that, I think maybe for like empties videos. I don't know. I haven't done that many videos about that recently, but this was from January and February 2018. It was posted in March of 2018. So this is a little bit over two years ago. Fun. And this has, I mean, all, all my earlier videos don't have that many views. I think it has like 30 views <laughs> in like one comment. So yeah, let's jump straight in. I haven't found lashes that are this, this, oof, can you speak today? That doesn't change. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today I'm going to get into my favorites. Ooh, sidebar, these little, um, like logo things that I made, I was doing my best with that Photoshop and those don't look good. <laughs> Yikes. Let's get this over a little bit more so we get more room and fails from January and February of this year. I have quite a few favorites to go over, a lot of great new products that I've just tried out, and I have technically it's one fail, but it's a collection that's a fail. Let's go ahead and jump right in. My favorite new lashes that I've tried out are from Velour, and they are the Silk Lashes in Another Shot of Wispy. This is the first time that I've found lashes that are a pretty durable like for the price that you're paying they're around like 15 to 20 dollars i believe they are going to be durable i've worn these at least five times and you know i don't think i have those lashes anymore but i'm gonna double check oh my god i still have them are these new ones i think they have to be new ones did i buy another pair these might be the same pair <laughs> well they're here I just make sure I wash them every time that I wear them and then I put them back in the case and they're good to go. They are perfect, the perfect size, the perfect shape. I only had to trim them down like a little bit. Otherwise they were the perfect size already just for my lash line. They are the perfect length. I have extremely hooded eyes and I can't wear a whole lot of lashes because some brands version of dramatic lashes go like above my eyebrows, which just looks ridiculous. So I really appreciate I still agree with that. That's part of the a big reason why I struggle with lashes because I still can't find like a perfect like style that works for me really well. And I've seen a lot of people that I follow on YouTube, once they find a style they like that they go with it. And I think maybe, I don't know, I've, I've mentioned in another video where I like the accent lashes more, where it's really just like the outer corner kind of lashes. And I could definitely look into using those more, but yeah, I forgot how much I actually like really liked these lashes, so I'm tempted to bring them out and try them again. I appreciate the length of these. Let me do a, a close-up real quick just so you can see them. So they really are the perfect length. They don't look incredibly dramatic. As you can see, the hairs are still spread out and wispy, but they do add, you know, more flair than like a typical Ardell Demi Wispy, which those are my, my favorites before these ones. So I have been loving these lashes, but I will have to say my love in part has to go to how nicely this new lash glue that I'm using is working. So I picked up a little kit of both of these lash glues. They are from House of Lashes. I have the eye Ooh, so House of Lashes. Eyelash adhesive in clear white and then in black. 
this is the best glue that I've tried. I've tried the duo lash glue. I've tried the like our- I remember using these and back when I couldn't really do lashes that well, this glue was really, really good <laughs> for me. It dried down fairly quickly. It stayed in place and it lasted, you know, for an actual full day back when I would actually try to wear lashes out of the house. I did have an experience where I bought another bottle of this stuff and it like, it was totally defective. Like I, I tried to open it up and it totally congealed and it, it, and it wasn't worth the price. I mean, it's kind of a bit pricey for a lash glue, but I remember having to go through like customer service and they gave me a really hard time about it and they wouldn't send a replacement. I, so because of that, uh, I have not reached out or tried that lash glue again. And if anything, I've been hearing good things about, I think Shop Masse has a lash glue. I haven't tried it out yet, so I don't know about it. And I've heard about a couple of other lash glues. And then there's like that liner where it doubles as like a lash glue and a liner. I forgot, I'll throw it up here. I talked about it in my last window shopping video. So like those are things I'm more like, you know drawn to now and not so much the house of lashes one I, mean, I gotta admit it was mainly because of that bad customer service experience that i got the like ardell lash glue i've tried the strip lash glue from duo this is the easiest foolproof lash glue that i've found it really makes applying your lashes so much easier so much easier like i can get i'm still a beginner at lashes and i'm still practicing but i can get these lashes on in a minute and a half and that's good for me i used to struggle for like almost 10 minutes with lashes trying to use that other glue and it would slip and it would slide and you would ruin your eyeshadow and it would, it would look crazy it would look crazy but this stuff like you put it on you wait 20 seconds i either wave it around or blow on it a little bit and then sidebar i'm just look oh that's a lovely place to pause on i'm just looking at my eyebrows here they're so i mean they're bushy but I think this is before I was actually doing my own eyebrows because a while ago I used to go and get them threaded or waxed. I would never do them myself. Now I do them myself and I'm really happy because I can just touch them up whenever I need to. But they, they look a bit rough, girl. <laughs> you stick it right on and it just sticks. Just sticks. That is one thing though. It does stick really well. So at the end of the day, you can't just peel them off like you could with any other lashes you really have to go into the cotton pad soaked in with eye makeup remover hold it down for a little bit take them off make sure you clean your lashes really well but other than that this oh. that was so many steps i have to say like <laughs> i do like i do like the way lashes can extend a look and everything but that's it is a bit bit much isn't it I am so glad that I found this lash glue. I've already bought a backup of the full size of this one. I was able to get the pack of both of these little minis to try out. It was like $9. Highly, highly recommend this, especially if you're a beginner at lashes. My next favorite has been a new concealer that I've finally gotten to try out. It is the Makeup Revolution Conceal and Define. I picked these up from Ulta and my local Ulta like display was totally like empty which is awesome like i'm glad they're doing really well thankfully a few of the lighter shades were still in stock but both of these that i picked up i so this must have been right around the time i like it first came out which oof it's been a bit there were only like one or two of each of these left i picked up the shade c5 and c6 just to try them out um they didn't have demos they did have like a row of demo concealers theoretically there but both of these demos were missing so i kind of went like based on how I saw the tube looking. But C6 is like my perfect concealer shade. I can use C5 if I mix it in, it's just a little bit darker, but I have a few foundations that are too dark for me that I can lighten up with these two mixed together. So it's got a big doe foot, just like the Tarte Shape Tape. So a lot of people have been comparing this concealer to the Tarte Shape Tape. I agree that like the packaging and the doe foot are really similar, but when it comes to the formula, I don't really see too much, you know, similarities between them. I like this one so much better. This does not crease under my eyes. The Tarte Shape Tape creases like mad. So yeah, that is one thing. I hated the Tarte Shape Tape for under my eyes. It just, I can't use it there. Maybe it's my fine lines, maybe it's my dark circles, but it was just thick and goopy and always looked terrible after a full day. So the one Tarte Shape Tape that I did buy ended up finishing, I panned the whole thing, but I used it as an eye primer instead of using it under my eyes. It was an amazing eye primer, but it was a terrible under eye concealer. <laughs> so I did not like that. I do like these concealers and actually I used a Makeup Revolution concealer today. Let me grab it. So it's not the Conceal and Define that I had here, though I did just finish a Conceal and Define. It should be in my next empties video, but I did have the Conceal and Hydrate and I am using this one as well. Well, I have to say, that st st 
you know, withstood the test of time, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, the Conceal and Define is still good to this day. I do like that concealer. I think it's affordable. They have a great shade range. And I do like the Conceal and Hydrate. I did get a better shade for myself. So back then, I was, what, C C5, C6? This is a C1. And I use this concealer today. I am yellow Casper. I am Custard Casper. <gasps> Custard Casper. Anyway, so yes, that is a definitely a better shade for me now, but I still use it, so I'm actually really surprised that in my first favorites video, I talked about these concealers and I'm still using them. Shows you just how good they are. I really only use it to spot conceal. This feels a lot more moisturizing under the eyes. It's not as dry. I have combination skin, so I have really oily chin, nose, and forehead, but the rest of my face- And you can see back then, like throughout this video, I was covering up a lot of, well, a lot more breakouts, and I tend to have them like right here face gets really dry especially in the winter so finding a moisturizing medium coverage this isn't full coverage you can build it up to full coverage though especially if you wear a color corrector underneath it like I do every day because my bags are crazy so I really think this is a great okay. alternative to the shape tape especially if you're having troubles with creasing or with dryness like I was they have a fantastic shade range. I know a lot of this is still in stock online, but I would check your local Ulta. I'm not sure if these are gonna be in like regular drugstores. Okay, my next favorite from the past couple of months has been the Urban Decay Velvetizer Powder. I had this in my collection. I bought it like in the middle of the summer back when it first released and I had used it for a while and then I put it away and I was trying a few more, more drugstore priced powders and then I went- I was gonna say, I remember using that powder and loving it and I had been tempted several times since then to repurchase it but it's pretty pricey i think now I, I saw people talking about how they found it at tj maxx and how they found it on sale but back then it was like 30 40 dollars for a loose powder and it, it, even though it was a great loose powder i loved it it looked great under my eyes it was still a bit too much for a loose powder so as much as i liked it i, I have to say i have not repurchased it since i panned this full one i went back to this and i forgot how much I love this. I'm wearing it today on top of the Makeup Revolution concealer and it really, it's such a high definition, finely milled powder that it really just glosses on and like smooths out your skin. Like it's putting, it's almost like you're putting like a filter on your face. Now that's not always great depending on what you're going for, depending on what you have to do throughout the day, but if you're taking pictures, if you're doing anything up close, if you're doing anything up close and you won't be like sweating too much, I think this is a fantastic, fantastic powder, which is why I've been loving it so much more now in the winter. During the summer, I wasn't a huge fan of this because it looked great when you first put it on, but if you're oily or if you sweat a lot, then it doesn't hold up as great. And true story, I still sweat in the summer. <laughs> That's why I actually had, it took me a while to actually um, formulate, not formulate, but like get uh, different routines for different seasons. So really my, my main differences are between winter and summer. So like summer, I really need matte products. I have some go-to matte foundations I love. I have some, I have some, I have one go-to like concealer for the summer that is just bulletproof. But it took a while of, of a lot of testing to really figure out what worked best for me in the summer. I'm really going for matte. I'm going for what's going to hold up through a, a full work commute because I was still working. I had to walk a mile to a train station, trains, walk back. So I it had to hold up through a lot. So I've got some bulletproof things there. And then it, it took a while for me to realize that it doesn't, those same products don't always work the best in the winter when it's dry and you're looking for hydration, especially when you have combination skin that just gets a little bit finicky. So I was still figuring that out at this time. And I was finally getting to the point where I could realize and like point out, oh, this worked good for me here. It did not work good for me here. And it's for e reasons X, Y, Z. So that was something that I was really happy to actually, you know, start to pinpoint because up until that point I was like oh I like this makeup but it sometimes works for me sometimes doesn't and I don't know why I was finally pinpointing those reasons why throughout the day but during the winter on my dry skin on my on the dry patches of my skin it just smooths everything out and looks amazing and my last favorite of the month has been my fixed morphe 18k coffee palette <laughs> was anyone here way back when I did that video that was a while ago so 
What I did is back when I was still testing out Morphe things and I was buying Morphe things, the Morphe 35K, which was the coffee palette, called to me, but it was huge. It had way too, I'll throw a picture up of what the, what the palette is. It was way too big. It had way too many uh, shades in it, but I liked the color story it was going for. It was an, a unique mixture of like cool tones and warm tones, and I loved the fact that it was called the coffee palette. Come on. So I did a full video where I redesigned the palette, where I basically depotted it. I decided which shades to keep and which to throw away and really just formatted and made a smaller version of it. I don't think I still have it. I think I decluttered it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I decluttered it, but I was so proud of myself for creating. Oh no, it died. So my camera just cut out, but what I was saying is I was so proud of the fact that I, I had like recreated the palette. I condensed it. I really distilled it down to what I thought the core elements of it were. And I was using it a lot, and because I wasn't really using big palettes as much back then, this really helped me like reach for the shades, and I got better at repressing shades because I messed up a lot of shades in that palette when I had to depot it because I wasn't good at it yet. So I learned a lot through it. Was it the best palette in the world? Absolutely not. <laughs> but I was so proud of myself, and you can see it here. I was like, look at me, I did this. <laughs> Now, if you missed the video where I cut down the Morphe 35K and made it into the 18K, I'll go ahead and link that in the cards above and down in the description box below. But I've really been feeling inspired by this palette, as I said like 30 times in that video. But I had a whole lot of fun, you know, getting involved and making basically my own palette out of this. And I've been really connecting with it. Um, I love the looks that I've been getting out of this, and I really think it is super versatile, and I'm just having a lot of fun with it. All right. So, <laughs> did you just see the sass that just went into my face right there? <laughs> I went from being so proud of myself about this new palette that I made, and I was like, all right, let's get into some shit. <laughs> the big disappointment, the big letdown. Tell me, what is it? Why? The Gothographic Collection from Wet n Wild. I picked up the box. This was $40 for all the products inside. I really had a lot of high hopes for this collection. Their mermaid collection was, you know, such great quality and it was so hyped and I saw all the reviews and I saw how great quality everything was, but unfortunately back then I just didn't have the funds to pick up that collection and I didn't see anything in stores and it was limited edition so now it's gone. Jump ahead till now. Yeah, I gotta say, so this also brings me back to you just being grateful for what I have right now and you know, the fact that I can afford makeup in my collection as it is. Because like I said, that was a $40 box. I did not have an extra $40 to buy the other collection that I really wanted. So that, if anything, that really made me more upset about how bad that collection was because I had to save up the $40 to buy that full collection and then I got it and I think 90% of it was trash. And I was so, so upset. Because not only because it was the aesthetic that I love, like, you saw the box. You saw me here. I've got like a, a cool tone smoky eye. I've got a weird like metallic lip on. I still have the same general aesthetic, you know, but I was I was just really upset with that collection. The fact that I had bought the full collection and most of it was just meh. But that was a lesson too. Like you, you don't know exactly what you're buying. And also most of the wet and wild limited edition stuff is mm, very hit or miss at best. <laughs> Jump ahead till now, they released this new collection. It's got skulls all over it, and it's all black and white packaging, and I'm all for that. Yes. I was so excited, and yes. I saw the products, and I was like, oh great, there's gonna be highlighters, it's gonna be the lips. I love their, what, like, their cat suit liquid lip formula, they have liquid shadows. I was all over it. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. Everything sucks. <laughs> Except for the highlighters. Everything sucks. Except for the highlighters. Ooh, I was mad Abby. God, I was so disappointed. So, let's go ahead and go through this collection. I was also, I kept messing with the hair a lot. I didn't know what to do with my hands in videos. And back when I straightened my hair, hey, my hair is really long. I mean, I think my hair used to be like almost down to my butt when I was still straightening it. And uh, I really liked having it like in the pigtails. I just loved how that looked. But uh, it's weird seeing myself with uh, straight hair you know, piece by piece. Let's start with the liquid shadows. There's four of them. There's a pink, there's a purple, there's like a dark purple, and then there's like this really pretty, like, light pink shimmer that I was most excited about. I tried out all of these. They look beautiful when you first put them on, 
even if they feel a little heavy. Now when you put this on, you feel like you're wearing a glitter. When I put on my Stila Glitter and Glows, that's what I'm wearing today, you don't feel it on your eyes. You really don't. I wore this one. This is the shade Pure Intention. I wore this just the way I was wearing this today, just on the inner corner and kind of like spreading it out on the edge. I wore this for a full work day and this is what it looked like at the end of an eight hour day. Yeah. Mm. This is also some of the first times I was like taking photos of what my makeup looked like at the end of a full work day. And yeah, that, oof. Oof, that looks bad. Man, that was, that was a really big disappointment. And yeah, I remember um, this is also, again, I was really beginning to test makeup thoroughly for the first time and taking pictures and really documenting, documenting, documenting the experience. Like it felt heavy and the way that it feels, the way that it applies, the way that it wears. I was just getting into that for the first time here. And while it is still a bit rough, like you can see my editing wasn't as good. My speaking wasn't, I wasn't as comfortable in front of the camera as you can very clearly see, but I, I was very passionate about the makeup and what I was talking about. So oh, I just keep thinking, oh, baby Monica. It just wore horribly. It felt super uncomfortable. At the end of the day, my eyes were all scratchy and itchy. It was heavy. You could feel this on the entire time. Incredibly disappointed. Next, we have the liners. Pink. They're all shimmery. They're all streaky. I've been looking for a good white eyeliner for forever. Yep. Still haven't found one. The best thing that I've found so far is a liquid lipstick. I don't know what it is about white eyeliners that just so hard to do. But anyway, these hard pass. They're all too shimmery to really do anything with the, the actual... Ooh. Okay, we're just going to leave that one on the floor. The actual applicator itself is just... It's too flimsy to really do anything with. You can't get a sharp line out of it. You can't get a lot of product. Hot mess. Hot mess. Now for what I think was really the most disappointing part of this entire collection were liquid catsuit lips. I own like eight of these and I love all of those, but I know with the formula some of them are hit or miss. I did get my hopes up because of how great the formula was on the Mermaid Collection lips. Like they look beautiful. These not so much. This is the only one that I can really use and it's because it's almost close to the shade of my natural lip color and it's really streaky, but because it's like a almost like a nude color, it looks like a gloss. They really should have made these lip toppers, if we're being honest. That's a really good point. I remember these being marketed as like lipsticks, like opaque lipsticks, and they're not. <laughs> they're definitely not. I don't know if I, I don't think I tried them on here or did swatches. They were, they were bad. And like, I, I do agree there. They should have been, you know, labeled as lip toppers or lip glosses or anything, but they were, they were streaky messes. Honest, because they're so streaky, like this, is what this should look like, but it's not. I'm actually wearing a Jeffree Star liquid lip. This is in the shade Restraints. So this is what I wanted, and instead I got a streaky hot mess. So while all of these look nice, like in the tubes, they just come out streaky, and you can't even like build them up. Like with certain lip colors, even if they're not fully opaque, you can build up, you can put layers on. With these, you can't layer them, you can't build them up. They just, not pill, but they just like build up and they crack and... God, I was really excited about this and it just ended up being blah. They have a highlighting stick, which... Eh, like it's okay. Oh, I forgot about the highlighting stick. Yeah, I don't use highlighting sticks. I have one now that I got in a Tri Beauty box and I just don't, I don't touch it. I'm never gonna reach for a highlighting stick. It's like really purpley pinky, but I didn't wear this throughout the day. I don't really like stick highlighters to wear because I like putting powder on top and setting my entire face. So I haven't put this through a full day wear test. I mean, it looks nice, but it's not nicer than other powders that I would more, be more likely to reach for in my actual collection. So with all of that out of the way, the only parts of the collection that are actually worth picking up are the two Mega Glow highlighting powders and the loose highlight, which is gorgeous. So these two, we have shades White Raven and Purple Ashes, which I still have those highlighters, I believe. They're depotted now, but I stand by it. The Mega Glow Highlighting Powder Formula from Wet n Wild is one of the best affordable highlighters you could find out there. 
they're amazing. I, I think I decluttered that loose highlighter because I wasn't a fan of loose highlighters back then. Recently, I've been experimenting a lot more with loose products and loose formulas, so I really do like the loose highlighter. I'm not wearing a loose highlighter, highlighter here, but I've been using a lot of loose products from Geek Chic Cosmetics and they have a loose highlighter that I love. So I'm getting more in the flow of trying them, but back then I still wasn't really reaching for loose products. But if you did want to just buy one highlighter and have it literally last you like years, if you bought a loose highlighter like that, it was less than $10 and like literally like years, <laughs> years of use. Purple Ashes is a little sparkly like i can actually see like little pieces of like sparkle and glitter in here so if that's not your jam wouldn't really recommend it the white shade is practically sparkle free it is almost duochrome and i think this one is the standout from the bunch you can't really see it too well on camera i would recommend this one and the loose highlighter in moon tears is stunning i love the fact that it's a little skull <laughs> it's a little skull and the shade itself it's a nice like ethereal gold nice adjective oh god i wish it would show up a little bit better on camera but it's a gold that's wearable for lighter skin tones as well as darker ones on my skin tone it pulls i have super yellow undertones it pulls a little bit more pink than i think it would on most people because in the pan it looks really gold but it's stunning. I would really recommend getting the loose highlighter because it is super affordable and you get a whole bunch of product in here. I'm never going to use this up and yep. neither, no one's ever going to use this up unless you're putting it all over your body. Unless you're bathing in this, you're never going to use it up. All right, guys, so those are all of my favorites and fails from the past two months. Let me know what you thought down below. Have you picked up anything from the new Wet n Wild collection? And if you did, what did you think? Was it a big of a letdown as it was for me? So if you like question. this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. So I know if you want to see any more of these favorites and fails videos in the future, don't forget to subscribe before you leave and hit that little bell icon so you're notified whenever I post a new video. And I hope I'll see you in my next one. Bye. Aww, that was fun. So yeah, so I'm surprised at what products I picked, uh, which are still around now. If you guys want to see more reaction type videos like this, uh, let me know. I can definitely do more. And I think I'm probably going to go back and watch some of my older videos because that was fun. Just seeing the difference like in my hair, just in my makeup application. You saw I had wings there. I used to live like every day with a, a, an eyeliner wing. I didn't feel myself with that one. But uh, yeah. That was fun. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you'd like to give it a thumbs up and let me know if you want to see me react to any more of my older videos down below. And I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye.